and equality For the whole world economy Freedom and tolerance Hand in hand with no government But reality hit me Like an uppercut in my kidney Hello and welcome back on my channel. Yes. Yes, you are seeing correctly and you're hearing correctly. I'm speaking English today because first of all, I'm very talented and I speak multiple languages. And secondly, uh, because I have a very, very, very special guest with me today, Monsieur Journaux Francais <laughs> from Michel Couvreur Whiskies. Journaux. Hello. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time uh, for, for uh, taking part in a little bit of, of fun here with us. Um, Jean Arnaud is currently here in Germany for two tastings and for the Limburg Whiskey Fair, which is tomorrow and the day after. Exactly. Uh, we are currently in Frankfurt after a Corona break of, I don't know, three years or something. You're finally back. Yes, so four years ago. Four we, years ago. We discussed just before it was four okay. years ago, which was crazy. But so pleased to be there. Yeah, yeah it's and great. Welcome mm -hmm. to welcome you here. Mm -hmm. um, Jean, you are the cellar master. Is that your title? Yes. 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 Of uh, Michel Couvreur Whiskies. Mm -hmm. um, first question, I guess, what does the cellar master do? <laughs> um, he go to the cellar every day. <laughs> um, for me, it's very important to uh, um, to know exactly what we have in the cellar. So that's it's an uh, important point because I'm very lucky because I grow with the company. So it's maybe uh, easier for me because I've begun with not a lot of cask in the cellar and uh, my education in whiskey grow with our stock and that was very great because I was able to follow every cask and for me that's a very important point. Today we have a computer, a software, who follow, we have a code bar on every cask in order to know exactly what it contains, where it comes from, the yeah. distilleries, the style of the cask. <coughs> so it's very important to to know exactly but for me that the software can't replace your your brain yeah. and uh, your feeling. Yeah. So it's why it's very important to be every day in the cellar to try 10, 20 casks every day to give. And the software for me, it was very great to be able to give some keywords okay. of tasting, of feeling. Okay. That makes a big difference. Okay, you know the distillation date, you know um, the concentration of alcohol, the volume, that it's classic, the aging, but it's very interesting to give some specific keywords in order to do a selection. Okay. To know exactly. I, I'm, I believe I don't drive the cask, but I follow the maturation. Okay. I so you get the cask, you fill it with, with spirit? Yes. And over the years, you are trying it again and again, exactly. smelling, tasting, and yes. you're seeing how, yes. where does it develop? Will it be a blossoming? Will it be a exactly. very sherry? Exactly. Be open because some, that for me that was a nice lesson because you believe you repeat exactly what you have done before. For example, a sweet Pedro Emenek cask yeah. with this this celery. And every time you obtain something different mm. because the humidity, because the wood of the cask, because some details, the wine which contained before the cask. So that makes every time something different. So it's why I, uh, we decided that it's not possible to, to drive, but to analyze and to, for me, it's important if you prefer to do, to select for the overage or for the pale single single or for the blossoming and to, uh, and to adapt and to follow and to move the cast. That for me is... Uh, so the um, cask really dictates what it's going to be. Exactly. If you want to have, uh, for example, if you want to have an uh, old cask, an old single malt whiskey, it's better to keep a long time in a dry cellar. Yeah. If you immediately move in the humid cellar, you lose too much alcohol concentration and after 15 years, is already tired, sometimes it's not enough energy. Yeah. We need to keep energy. It's whiskey demand yeah. to have a good energy. So it's interesting to know what you expect. And so it's very important to decide when you will move the cask. Yeah. But that's it's for a long time. It's I not see. a very stressful decision. Yeah. <laughs> it's you have time, to react. have time to react yeah. and to, uh, to adapt. Yeah. Yes. So maybe you should explain. Um, at Michel Couvreur currently there are 
well, two warehouses, I would say, one mm -hmm. overground, new built. Today we have four warehouses mm -hmm. uh, in okay. the village. Yes, we have increased the stock because uh, we want to care more, to be able... We believe that the aging is very important. Yeah. So today um, our volume mm -hmm. is good, but we need to increase the aging mm -hmm. of our stock. So today we have uh, a very humid old cellar that Michel Cooper dug yeah. a long time ago. We have the new cellar, it's a modern cellar, it's a drier cellar. Yeah. We like to begin the maturation in, in, this, uh, in this part. And we have two other places, it's like a farm, oh, okay. a stone building, okay. with very hot in summer, very cold in winter, okay. different temperature uh, okay. depending on the, the season. And so the complete opposite actually of the cellar because yes, that stays it, very so it's very interesting very interesting to compare and to have different style of maturation so that is basically also your decision to see when do i move what exactly. cask to which part exactly yeah. yes exactly and uh, i believe we are we are not a lot to work like that because uh, when we prepare a blend uh, sometimes um, very often, we don't empty the cask. Mm. I'm able to take 20 liters <coughs> from this cask, 40 liters from yeah. the other cask, 50 liters, and we continue the maturation with uh, the cask which is, has been uh, a part empty. Mm. And that's because I, for me, I have a lot of sentences from Michel Couvreur, and one of the sentences is please don't follow any recipe. Okay. Um, follow you, your feeling. Yeah. Because every time your whiskey will be different, yeah. and if you just follow your recipes, ten percent of this, ten percent of this, yeah, yeah. that doesn't, work. doesn't work. Six months later, the whiskey will be different. Yeah. And because the sherry cask, every time is different. Yeah. A Manzania coming from a bodega, another bodega will be different. A Manzania, uh, depending on the vintage, will be different. Of so please don't be sure always have a doubt yeah. and always try every time and it's why for me it's interesting to to be a team and uh, very important to share the mm -hmm. tasting um, for me it was very comfortable to work with Michel Couvreur because he didn't work in the cellar and I share what I did with him and he said okay it's great not great we discuss a lot okay. together and he was so for me it was so great to have his opinion that yeah. for me it was comfortable and unfortunately when he passed away for me it was more stressful because I have nobody to, to of course you to have say, to say okay it's good make all the decisions go on or not and to take the decision and so that makes the company grow step by step with today the son-in-law the daughter of Michel Kubra okay. the little son and, and all the team. For me, it's very great that people who bottle, who label, who prepare yeah. the order, we sometimes oh, nice. we make a break yeah. all together in the afternoon and we try all together. Oh, okay. Jarno, please explain. How many people are involved? Eight, eight, eight people. people. Yes. Eight people. That's nice. And that's great to have to explain. Yeah. Why you have to do that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel it's yeah. a good idea or not. But uh, so it's but it's great that every people work. Uh, be um, aware and uh, and share exactly what uh, what we want to do and to do the difference and to can compare with yeah. uh, different distilleries. Sometimes I we can I can come with some different bottles from other company. Yeah. Okay, come on, we we, we see what happened in other uh, distillery. Is but everybody have to uh, like a big family. Mm. It's, uh, that's uh, the soul. Yeah, I believe it's very important. So you will be celebrating your 25th anniversary at Michel Cover next year? Yes, yes, yes. 25 years? Yes. So How old are you? I'm, I, will, I will be uh, 50 years at, uh, okay. in December. But for me it's... Uh, but you started in a, a wine person? I don't know how you call yes, it in Yes, English. yes, yes. In onology, onology. I onology. didn't know anything about whiskey when I began with Michel So Cover. really that was your, your first experience yes, really with yes. whiskey? When for you Michel Cover told me it's great. How did you get to Michel Cover? Twenty. Uh, I was 24. No, but uh, how, how? How? Because I'm. I work in a champagne company. It's a big company. Okay. And uh, a, a nice friend who was sommelier by Bernard Loiseau uh -huh. he said to me, "Come on, I have to. We have to meet somebody very strange people <laughs> who do whiskey in Burgundy." I say whiskey in Burgundy. That's uh, and uh, for me, it was more than for the work. 
then for the meeting with Michel Kubra, okay. with uh, the man. It was, uh, he explained, we discussed a lot of time, we forgot to discuss about whiskey, okay. and we discussed about the life. Um, I, I, it's, it's strange because today in France, you know, there are some difficulties, there's a lot of strikes about retirement. Yes. With, uh, yes. And I remember that Michel Kubra said, please, if you come on, if you want to work with me, it's not, um, a, it's not for work only. It's your life, yeah. because you will follow the maturation, you will follow some... Uh, yeah, of course. Um, and a company is a life. And yeah. uh, I'm sorry, but the weekend will stop. You continue, you can enjoy to meet people, great people, you will tr travel, you will be sad, we will be tired in your mm. warehouse, alone, we have to move the cask, but that's a life. Mm. And uh, the life is a work and you will uh, grow with the company. And that okay. for me, it was uh, a very a nice great, uh, yeah. nice philosophy. And the end is not to gain money. It, that's another sentence, I'm sorry, but uh, it was, that's helpful to do what you want to yeah, do. Yeah. But it's not the finite point. Yeah. That's very important. Enjoy what you do, be proud. Yeah. Sometimes people doesn't like, it's not a matter. Mm. Okay, of course. It's, it's of course. It's impossible. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But be always proud. You can explain what you do. You, it's um, a very special way mm -hmm. you can take, but uh, um, it's very important to 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 uh, that the finite finite point is don't it's very important for me to don't feel successful mm -hmm. okay every time you have to repeat and it is always stressful for example with Frank I'm always pleased to hear his feedback because it's of course uh, yes, we all don't, love don't, Frank's every, feedback <laughs> But it, for me, it's uh, it's important to uh, not be sure of what you do. I see. That's that's very important. Yeah. And always open, always uh, uh, yes, uh, um, interested by uh, the feedback of your customers. Always criticize. Um, it's very important. Yeah. So, what was the first Michel Couvreur whiskey you actually drank? Do you remember that? Uh, for me, I, I I'm sorry, but I drank a lot when I began. Because for him, it was very important to uh, feel the philosophy of what he yeah. expected. And for him, he fell in love with the very old single malt scotch mm -hmm. whiskey, mature in sherry cask. Not always um, elegant or very well balanced. Mm. Sometimes we are very strong of sherry or very strong of... Uh, for me, I remember... The f for example, I tried with him uh, old Glenfiddich, okay. 50 years old. At okay. the beginning, I have the image of this is a big brand, it's not necessary. Honestly, it's just crazy whiskey. Mm. I, nev I will never forget. Mm. And because I discover is okay, it's a whiskey, but it's a, it's a time share with the people. It's not only alone in your room. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's give a good emotion. But I suppose it's better when you can share mm. with people. Not too much, mm -hmm. but nice company, yeah. and you can discuss together. And uh, he explained to me that a perfect whiskey is boring. Mm. You, what you expect is the emotion, mm -hmm. and you, sometimes you can't explain. Is uh, um, is some default, some fault from too much sherry or too much strong of mm -hmm. alcohol, or sometimes. Uh, but if you have uh, um, very spe specific lang lengths. Uh, that give emotion, yeah, and that make uh, it make me try some very old Springbank, some very old Tininish, very old Brora, yeah. very old uh, Macallan, and he said this is what, uh, like in French we say le Graal. Okay. This is what you have to to try to uh, to follow, and say okay, this is a philosophy, and it's why I like to keep. We like to have uh, in the company a whiskey stock oh, okay. of old bottle because I, uh, I begin to be uh, mature <laughs> and we have begin to think about uh, uh, the man or the woman who will uh, follow my job and yeah. she has to know exactly the story of uh, the company. I mean, as you just said, it, it is important to have that experience, right? You cannot replace that with anything. Yes. We, we discussed, for example, with the little son who had joined us, uh, Alberic had joined us the company two, two years ago. He has begun to distill. Mm. And uh, for me, it's important to say, okay, that's uh, like a life, the brand will change. Mm. But we have to follow a philosophy. Mm -hmm. If we don't have the same range in 10 years, mm. it's not matter. Mm. But 
it's very important that people recognize the Michel Cooper touch. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessary, it's not to be stressful to follow exactly what we are doing now. Yeah. But be careful about uh, the touch. The I guess change is really inevitable because the casks change over exactly. the time. So yes, I mean, the sherry casks become very raw, very yeah. expensive, more very complicated to be supplied. Yeah. It's very... Uh, so that is something you do also? Try yes. to yes. source Go sherry to Spain casks? To, to try to have... Very important is to have... Because in Spain, we, we don't need a lot of sherry cask. Mm. We are a small company, mm. so... But today you, you have different style of sherry cask. Seasoning cask, mm -hmm. impregnated few years, mm -hmm. and the very old sherry cask. And Michel Couver, we want to obtain the very old sherry cask. So they don't... What does very old mean for you? More than 25 years. Yeah. So we have between 25 until one century. So that's one century. Yes, we have some. That's from. It's more like a museum <laughs> than a cask. We we are very lucky. From a, in Montia Moriles, they called us four years ago. You have to come. Mm. Say oh, in, in summer. I don't like to go to Spain in <laughs> summer. It's a little too hot. Completely I prefer yeah. my a cool warehouse, yes, and cool yes. cellar. So, but say no. You have no choice. You have to come. Mm. And I, uh, when I arrived. Immediately, we they showed to me there was 15, one century uh, in chestnut wood, not in oak wood, in chestnut wood, a very big oh, um, cask, wonderful cask. Yeah. And they the wine were still in wood, and okay. we tried the wine from in the cask. Yeah. No liquid, syrup, very dark, yeah. with a lot of sediment inside, a lot of acidity. It was completely Pedro strange. Jiménez? Pedro Jiménez, yeah. completely strange because not uh, flavors as we try usually uh, for Pedro Jimenez. That's for me, it's great to have good connection. It's why for me, it's not the price sometimes, but it is uh, the good connection with, mm -hmm. uh, in, in France, for example, we have begun to distribute some, sh some bodega, mm -hmm. some wine from Spain. Yeah. They said, okay, you want a very raw, very limited cherry cask, please help us to sell a little in France. Yeah. It's win-win, it's, uh, it's interesting to, and France, they don't know uh, what is a Manzania, what is a Nolo Rosso. Yeah. So it's education. It's great to be able to... Yeah. And in a masterclass, so always interesting to... Um, for example, this pale single single mature in a Manzania or Fino cast. You can compare yeah. what is a Fino and then you can try the whiskey. And you understand uh, the story. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. So we, 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 we have accepted and honestly we don't sell a lot. <laughs> it's very limited uh, sales, yeah. but it's interesting for the store. Yeah, it is. I guess it isn't really on, on people's radars, you know, sherry. Yes. And especially all the sherry. You don't really get that anywhere. I mean, you really have to look for it if, if you're interested in that sort Today, of stuff. Today there's more and more some business of cask who can propose some uh, specific cask. You have a good list. Mm. But for me, I, it's, for the story, for Michel Kuro, it was very important to know when the cask has been empty. That's mm. very important. That's the cask be empty for us. No rinse, no sulfate, mm -hmm. just empty, very fresh. That make a big difference. So no sulfur. In exactly. No sulfur. On. No dry. Just so with the nice company we with whom we work, they empty the cask for us. Yeah. The so Friday is empty. Ship the Monday, and we fill with the spirit the Wednesday or the Thursday. Yeah. Very very fresh. Yeah. A short connection between uh, when it's empty and when we fill mm -hmm. with uh, the new make spirit. That's I guess that is why you really have that. That deep wine, wine exactly. influence yes. in the Michel sure. Cooper, which sure. is yes, and that is very for me. There's two points or three points very important is to be able to select such cask, mm. um, to don't use any pump. Mm -hmm. We only work by gravity. Okay, to don't do any filtration. For me, it's very important to um, don't manipulate between the cask and the bottle. Yeah, to have a short process between the cask and the bottle. Yeah, if if you come to, when you have the emotion to try from the cast directly, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you lose this emotion in the bottle. I see. So it's, it's try to have very something very simple between the cask and the bottle. That's very important. And the third point, people sometimes believe that the maturation is oak wood influence. Mm -hmm. 
okay, it's a wood influence because uh, tannin, mm -hmm. because uh, micro oxygenation. But the um, process of angel share for me is very, very important. Okay. Last year we have lost 5% of angel shares. That is approximately 20,000 liters. Mm. It's a lot. But that makes a big difference when you concentrate the flavors only by evaporation. I see. If you don't add too much water. Yeah. And that's very important point is to be able to lose the alcohol <coughs> concentration very slowly. Mm -hmm. To don't add too much water in one time. To uh, follow a very uh, uh, slow process thanks to the humidity of the cellar, thanks to uh, the different temperature, yeah. hot and, uh, and cold. That's very important. That make we keep the concentration. Which I also find very often and pretty much always in Michel Couvreur whiskies that the alcohol is so well integrated and I guess mm. that comes a little bit from that as well. Mm. So um, yes. that, that sharp alcoholic tinge that you have in some whiskies in Michel Couvreur. We, we, care, really we care about that. When we do the tasting we believe that uh, all together with the team it's very important that we don't feel the alcohol. Yeah. And that is the very point. It's supposed to be easy to drink. Mm -hmm. For me, it's very important to believe that it's like a silky texture. That is <laughs> yeah. something very soft. Texture is something texture also. Texture is very important yeah. in spirit. But when you have drank, immediately you understand that it's not so easy. That it's yeah. not only sweet. You have a second step yeah, yeah. that gives energy, uh, complexity, uh -huh. length. That's, for me, it's always three times. The beginning appears very easy something soft, mellow. Second step is, okay, you understand it's not just easy to drink, mm. there's a, a second complexity. And then when your mouth is empty, that is very great mm -hmm. because you can feel. And the emotion for me is, um, we like to compare with the music. It's, uh, uh, it's not to recognize the note of the music. For me, that is boring, but it's a following of different notes that gives the melody. And yeah. the melody is the emotion. And the tasting is the same. It's a successful of yeah. uh, a succession of uh, flavors uh -huh. that give a, mu a melody yeah. in your palate. That's it's. In my different. videos, I've often described it as sort of a journey. You know, it's a exactly. It's it's really not just a one one note thing, but it's yeah. That yes, makes that make a difference between a whiskey which is give emotion that you won't forget. Yeah and a whiskey you will remind for a long time. Yeah. If you and also in the it. bottle I, I find that very interesting that when I open an, a new bottle of Couvreur whiskey it is yes. always so different than when you know yes. it has a bit of air in yes. the bottle yes. after yes. some month. That's I have no explanation. I, I follow the same. I have some customer who have already uh, uh, note that mm. there's some difference. Sometimes we believe it's nice to let open few minutes because the alcohol yeah. uh, strengths let evaporate and, uh, and for me it's very interesting to keep a, a glass like that mm -hmm. and to uh, to forget for one two three days and to days to really taste okay. after and uh, in one day you can see a difference yeah. between and uh, mostly for the old whiskey uh -huh. that's that's great yeah. because at the beginning is very strict mm -hmm. you feel more the alcohol and at the end of the day it's so easy to drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely different. So it's very interesting. Let's talk real quick about um, the new bottlings that just uh, recently came out from, from Michel Dewey, the single casks. Um, you released uh, the second Alexei, yes. um, the fourth chapter of the Spiral, yes. and here we have the unexpected, unexpected. number three. Yes. Um, I have covered the Spiral and the Alexei in my previous video. I will put you the link in the description box. You can watch that if you want. Uh, the unexpected I haven't tried yet. So I have to read real quick what it actually is. <laughs> is I, it uh, a French spirit again? Uh, yes, exactly. Actually, we, we have begun to buy a French New Mex spirit uh, in 2010. Okay. Because we believe it was interesting to have organic New Mex spirit local mm -hmm. you can discuss because in scotland when we buy a spirit we we, we can't adapt mm -hmm. if you want you buy if you are not interested you don't buy mm. in france we are a little more famous in france yeah and we can discuss we can try to have some specific barley variety of barley okay. we can have organic barley we can try to have this is a distillation made with wood fire 
that gives some okay. details. I believe it's very interesting. Um, we 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 try to uh, to follow um, some process, different process, mm. and that's it's uh, distillery located in Alpen with. Uh, um, old variety of barley, it's Vanessa, it's not very old, but it's not usual variety and uh, it's distilled with our uh, wood fire. So we mm -hmm. believe it's a very concentrated uh, spirit, very concentrated of flavors. And we discovered that the aging is completely different than uh, Scottish spirit. Okay. Um, it's like rum. We have begun to make mature rum in 2010 too. Yeah. And uh, when it's very full of flavors, it's like a fight in the cask. Okay. Uh, and you make spirit when it's uh, very open, it's easier because it changes thanks to the wood, thanks to the sherry sometimes, mm -hmm. but it, it, it changes, it enhances uh, very easily. When you have something very concentrated, it's very slow. Uh, you need more time to obtain, obtain a good balance between the maturation and and this unexpected. You f continue to feel the the young spirit, mm -hmm. uh, despite being it's 11 years old. Fresh. You s you yeah. feel fresh. You feel uh, barley. You mm -hmm. feel a lot yes. of uh, new make spirit flavors. Yeah, it's such the beginning of the third style flavors. So what was it, the cast? Oh, so we it's Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez and Amontillado. Ah, okay, three different types. Yes, of cast. different. Some of them were mature in a humid cellar. Some yeah. of them in a dry cellar. It's natural strength. Yeah. Uh, Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Natural strength. No water. It just. That's the difficulties in order to obtain uh, so exactly the fifty dot uh, mm. three, but we, we prefer to uh, to let that fifty. Okay. And for me, it's uh, time per time I enjoy more and more the work of blending. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's uh, it's great it's a great uh, work because you have to analyze to let. Uh, in your vat yeah. to try uh, two days after yeah. to try to understand uh, what happened if you had and it's n it's never easy because if you add 20 liters immediately that change all your blend yeah. so you have to go to work step by step but I it's see. um it's very interesting to obtain a, a very well balanced uh, good elegance i see so it's unpitted no pit mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I suppose very full of flavors with a good lens, but different that we uh, used to propose. Yeah. So, I guess we should have a try. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Cheers. Yeah, it's very nice. It really continues that what what starts on the nose. It has this freshness, getting like a pear maybe or something like that, and the, the barley. You the feel top. a lot of the barley for me. Yeah. You feel the, the, the alcohol, and it's a beginning of. Um, for me, I like. Um, we 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 in French sometimes we say rancio. And rancio sometimes we believe it's like a shot net, it's like woody flavors. But for me, it's not like that. It's more uh, thanks to the oxygenation of the mm -hmm. spirit. In our cellar, that's the month minimum of, of nine years, ten years, and is a very fresh yeah. aftertaste. Um, anise, uh, mint, mm -hmm. uh, comfort sometimes. Yeah. Such flavors that make you your mouth keep very fresh, mm -hmm. and that's. We in our cellar, uh, we are not a able to to produce such flavors in a young spirit. I see that demand a minimum of uh, nine years, ten years. Yeah, yeah. So I had to pause real quick because we are taking too much time. We are babbling on and on, <sighs> just as it should be. So, uh, yes. Uh, what can we expect in the future? Do you have any things on your mind yet? What you will be doing in the next year or so? There's a lot. <laughs> I see. There's oh, a lot. Because we talked so much about distillation. You have started distilling yes. your own spirit? Yes. yes. How is... 
we have begun in uh, January uh, 22. Okay, so it's so uh, a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Yes, over a year. Um, it's for us. It's great. It's um, for the story of the company. It's wonderful because mm -hmm. it's a new step, and uh, there's different reasons. But we absolutely wanted to uh, to produce something uh, a spirit uh, like we used to have a long time before. So we decided to take a lot of risk. Yeah. So we, it's why I said uh, the little son of Michel Krova, Alberic joined to us uh, two years ago mm -hmm. in order to follow the, distil the process of distillation and uh, every day because that demand to be in the, uh, in the distillery every day. So we, we, it's local, organic, local barley. Okay. We try to find all variety of barley. We work with an association who, who help us in order to be able to uh, to, to supply with uh, all variety. Um, for the moment, we don't follow the process of the malting. We uh, let uh, the do the malting. We would like to think about uh, to be more to care more about the malting because yeah. it's a very important step in uh, in the process of uh, the distillation. We have um, uh, a mash tune of two less than three thousand liters. Uh, we follow a process of uh, three times temperature and the um, important things I believe is that we make the fermentation in wood vat mm -hmm. with natural yeast. That is a great challenge. So it's very hard to have uh, non-stop fermentation. Yeah. Today we have a process, we give nourriture with a new, uh, um, if you time, uh, a, a new batch that give nourriture to the yeast and we continue to have uh, yes, non-stop non fermentation. Yeah. And so today we have uh, five vats, five big vats, wood vats, and we do a fermentation for approximately two weeks. Okay. So it's a long fermentation. We control the temperature inside, it's at between 12 and 15 degrees Celsius. That makes the, t the fermentation very slow, very long. So that really is a, a different science all in itself, right? We, we learned it's very it's that's it's a new step. It's why it's very important to be to don't be alone, to be yeah. a team. Because did you have any experience in, in distilling before? The experiment or? what we have seen before hmm. in some distillery have a book with notes. I, I note every step that I could be very interesting hmm. and. Um, for last year, we tried a lot of things. Um, we've, we say the EBC, some special roasted barley, um, a specific fermentation, uh, different yeast. Yeah. Uh, we tried a lot of things. And we have a double distillation. The spirit still is 2,500 liters. Mm -hmm. And the day after, we distill in the smaller still, 700 liters. So that's today, we have produced 20,000 liters last year. Mm. Uh, it's not enough. Mm. Uh, we need, we expect to, normally we buy approximately 100,000 liters per year. Okay. So we think about how to increase and to be able not to be independent because we believe it's interesting to have different styles. I see. We continue to make blends yeah. and we believe it's interesting to have different suppliers of the new make spirit. But we would like to be able to increase our own production. For so are you filling casks or did you do you have filled casks yes, already yes, with yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So you have produced a spirit where you say that's what we what we want to have. Yes, yeah. exactly. And because I was in the cellar last year with, with Frank's tour. Yes. And that was still like uh, we're experimenting a bit. Moment and we experiment. Yeah. Today we have some sherry cask, we have some second hand mm. cask, we try different we the decision today is to don't propose a too young whiskey. Yeah. So it's not to propose in three years or in five yeah. years. Uh, we expect to be able to propose uh, 10 years, 12 years. I don't know exactly the timing now because that depends on the maturation, yeah. but not uh, young. We, we hope to be able to wait for a minimum of 10 years, mm -hmm. 15 years. So uh, that was really the first thought I had when we tried the new Mac spirit. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I would really be interested what that is 
mm. as an older yes, version. I yes, think yes. age would really suit that style of. For, for for me, it's great because it's like a new generation with the new generation who had joined us, and uh, it's a new story. And mm. For them, it's very interesting to begin to understand the evolution of a new make spirit. It's like for me when I grow with the stock. Mm -hmm. I believe it's great for them to grow with. Um, the distillation uh, two weeks ago we do a test we did a testing with a blind testing yeah. with uh, 25 samples coming from 25 different casks okay. from what we have distilled yeah and it's interesting because we have to note every details to and that it's very good what have you done uh, important thing is to recognize some step on your process on our process in order to be able to repeat Mm. Why it's so good? What have you done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> made it good? Yeah. That make very different than the other yeah, uh, yeah. batch, and that's why it's very important to note every detail and everything in order to be able to repeat uh, what we expect exactly. Mm. But for me, there's um, we have different dream all together. But my dream is to to be able to produce a new make spirit. Not necessarily elegant at mm -hmm. the beginning, but with full of flavors, yeah. like form flavors. Yeah. Not necessarily easy to drink at mm -hmm. the beginning. At the opposite, I believe sometimes that uh, a new make spirit, not very fine at the beginning, yeah. could give a beautiful old single malt. That is made to age, right? Yes, yeah. that's the difficulty is, is to think about what we could obtain yeah. Yeah. 10 years after. If it's too good uh, just from the steel, I'm a little afraid that we will be tired after 10 years. Mm -hmm. we need and I think that is, that is really what's happening today in the, in the whiskey industry, mm. that they're producing a very fruity, very yes. likable, yes. you make spirit that is really ready to drink in five years. I be, there, for me, there are some such difficulties. Is always when you distill, you want to, to, to taste something very good mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, yeah, so first. you try to to cut your heart in order to obtain something very elegant immediately. Mm. So that's the first difficulties. And the second difficulties is today, time and energy mm. is very expensive, are yeah. very expensive. Yeah. So when we decide to make a fermentation of two weeks, that demand energy to yeah. cool the temperature, that demand place in order to be able to stop yeah. for two weeks, um, we take the risk. And But I suppose, that's the philosophy that Michel Couvreur has yeah. begun. Don't hesitate to take risk. Don't hesitate to uh, to don't follow a short process because it's easier. Mm. If it's more complicated, it's better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't never choose the easy, uh, easy journey, yeah. the easy way. Yes. That's I think it's uh, the, the little idea I, I like to share with uh, the the young team. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really interested what. What we have to expect there, but I interrupted you. What is recent uh, news at Michel Couvreur? What is like the so, the so next plans you have in the in the near future? So it's in about bottling or about the bottling, production bottling. Yeah. Bottling we have the rum, who should be proposed rum. in September. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, a a blend of different casks of. Uh, we are not allowed to call it agricole rum because it's yeah. mature in France. I see. So it's coming from sugarcane spirit, from Martinique and Guadeloupe, but uh, uh, like you can't call it Scotch. exactly. But uh, yeah. we are not allowed to to call uh, agricole. But that's uh, will be very interesting to propose. Um, and we it, is, have, uh, it is matured in a sherry cask. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, yes, mm. yes. Which is something you don't really often see, right? It's um, for me. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it will be strange. Uh, I've already shared with some uh, rum producer like, uh, like uh, François Longtour or some uh, uh, plantation, the team of yeah. uh, from plantation, to in order to have uh, their feedbacks. And uh, uh, for me, the, the good point is that people recognize the Michel Couvre touch. Okay. Despite being rum, yeah. that was a challenge we yeah. have. It was uh, uh, it's a rum with a Michel Couvre touch. So there's a good sherry uh, touch and um, not aggressive. It's a high level concentration. It's a 55 natural mm -hmm. strength. So we will have to discuss with the team if we dilute a little or if we let at natural strength. Mm. 
um, it's interesting because there are some like a coffee touch okay. in the room and for me it's interesting to have a blend yeah and I'm wondering if it could be possible to blend a little uh, Guadeloupe with Martinique and I know that a lover rum lover will kill us if we <laughs> blend uh, uh, Guadeloupe with Martinique but <laughs> if we believe it's good I don't I believe it's a good idea did yeah. you have in the past like I, I I don't know if if I'm right, but I guess you're you're pretty um, happy to experiment with with different casks with with mm. different styles. Yes. Did you have experiments that completely failed, where you just went, no, we can't put that out? Failed. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, for example, we have a few casks, uh, red wine, Italian red wine. Okay. Uh, it's beautiful. Which, first of all, is weird because you're in the heart of Burgundy. Yes. We wine have everywhere. We, and <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> But for me and for for us, it's uh, um, not enough impregnated. Yeah. So casks from Burgundy are very expensive. Yeah. And uh, generally, it's not enough impregnated I with see. the wine. It's used for four years maximum, four years. Yeah. So we were very lucky to be supplied with old big cask of uh, Barolo mm -hmm. and Barbaresco and. Uh, but I believe that was full of flavors, very concentrate, and at the end is very delicate yeah. and very subtle. And I'm just a little stressful that we feel more the wood than the wine. I see. So that's, uh, we, Michel Couvre uh, flavors for me, it's more influenced by the wine yeah. than by the vanilla, yes. the woody flavors. So, so we have to follow, but it's not a very big success for the moment. Yeah. And sometimes we have uh, we have been disappointed by some maturation, but uh, because uh, too too humid or but we can use some such cask in a blended malt. Mm. It's not it's not too too hard. Mm. But sometimes we, are, we have begun to make mature in amphora, for example, in clay amphora. Okay. So that's we are not allowed to uh, call it whiskey. Okay. Because whiskey demand to be mature in, in wood. Okay. Yeah. But in amphora, for me, it's very interesting because we have the same style of oxygenation than in I wood. See. But we thought the vanilla influence. Okay. So the, the wood influence. So just exchange between oxygen outside yes, and uh, we have that the, maturation but without maturation, wood yes, influence but we are not allowed to give uh, age mm. because it's uh, yeah, on, it an age yeah so we will see but uh, the uh, uncolored is very golden color but for me it's okay. very elegant very delicate so uh, why we we could uh, try to continue the, such yeah. maturation it's interesting it's really interesting Mat spirit there are some spirit who are finished in Amphora, but no in clay, in uh, uh, in, in Demijohn or in uh, um, uh, in stronger uh, Amphora, just in order to give uh, a touch uh, texture, in, okay. uh, to give more sweet, more mellow mm. uh, spirit. In Armagnac, I know that uh, some domain do that. I'm really looking forward to enjoy the whiskies in the future. One last question we have for you: What is <coughs> the best bottling Michel Couvre ever released. What is your <laughs> your personal favorite. favorite bottling? That's that's very hard. I know. With you because I am an investigative journalist. I have um, the hard hitting questions. Um, um, uh, honestly, it's um, it's not necessary depending on exactly the the whiskey, but more the time. Um, shared. Yeah. You, you see, uh, so I'm sorry Frank is here, but I remember when he visited us one time and we opened uh, called Transition. We are. And, I was uh, there too. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> no, I looked and a bit For different. me, that's, uh, that's the finite point of my job. Okay. Is to share with uh, people who enjoy, who know what you work, yeah. understand what is it exactly. And uh, that is the best point of my job. Mm -hmm. Understand that you have an emotion, that you feel something mm -hmm. very special, that you understand what, because I have good friends and it's great because mm -hmm. they are not connoisseurs of whiskey. And I can open some whiskey, discuss, and, mm -hmm. but um, they, uh, we don't share the same feeling. Mm -hmm. And that is very specific when it's possible to share with somebody and you have a good connection, you understand what you feel, what yeah. I feel. We have the same emotion yeah. all together. That's great. And for me, this whiskey was, uh, 
tiny niche distillation, quite old maturation. And for me, I will never forget this time and I will never forget this whiskey. And, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually, I will never forget Frank's face. Yes, when <laughs> I, I remember the way he sorry, stood in the background and just... Yes, it was a <laughs> wonderful time share with And it was, it was a really, yes, really nice yes, experience. But that's... Um, uh, for me, I discovered that it won't be possible to stay in the cellar, mm -hmm. to just work in the cellar. And I discover, when I discovered that it was possible to share what I do with some connoisseur, with people who enjoy the whiskey, um, immediately that was a new world for me. Yeah. Because um, when you prepare a blend, when you work in your cellar, I, since this time I discovered that you don't work um, at the same f f um, touch if you know people, if you know your customers. Of course. When you know your you're customers, doing it for, for the people, Exactly. Right? You think about them yeah. and it's not possible to, that could be disappointed. Yeah. Okay, we can discuss, it's not my favorite mm. whiskey, I discuss, yeah. this is more pity, this yeah. is not, okay, that's that's great. But for me, it's just not possible mm. to say, hey, what are you doing? Then <laughs> it's not good. Or, and that make a big difference. Yeah. Why you the, the mom, connection the soup the, of your mom yeah. is better because she gives love. Yeah. It's the same recipes than uh, you can find everywhere. But that details make a big difference at yes. the end. And so I be, when I discovered that um, the, the, um, so nice emotion share with such clients with yeah. such customers that make a uh, big difference. Well, what a beautiful end point. And Joanno, I'm looking very, very no, much sure. forward to enjoying your soup in the future. Yes. Thank, thank you very you. much thank for taking for the time. No, no, with pleasure. I hope you You're have a wonderful at time here when you come back. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful time here in yes. Frankfurt. Yes, thank and you. And tomorrow at Limburg. And I'm looking forward to the tasting this evening. Maybe I will make a little tiny inside video. Maybe not, because I'm very lazy, you know that. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.